Okay, so the last portion is CPN, CVN, or gas. And now let's talk about ideal gas. And so one equation that I will write here is CPM minus CVM is actually R. CP minus CV is N. This is an equation that is true for ideal gas. And you remember the H, CP, this one is for ideal gas. So I can simply write EH. Dt <coughs> minus du dt. Right? And then if you remember, h was u plus pv. So this is a dt du dt dpv, which is n on t. Right? And then minus dt. Which is, I'm just carrying out this term, and so you can see that how I kind of. And then what? Gone. This one becomes N R. Right? So that's a CP minus C V becomes R. So therefore, this equation comes out. Handy. This is actually a very useful equation that it will come up in the description about the adiabatic expansions and, and so on in the chapter 3. Uh, this is an extra information, okay? Have you heard about monoatomic ideal gas? Diatomic ideal gas. Have you heard about this expression? Has anyone heard about this expression? Sort of, right? <laughs> My first question is what do you mean by ideal gas has even atoms in it? You just told me that. Ideal gas has no, it's a point <coughs> mass, no, no volume whatsoever. And what are you, why are you putting monoatom? It's almost like yeah, this is a, a ideal gas with one atom, diatomic gas. Two atoms. But this is a, but let's just behave. This is an ideal gas, right? This statement is actually to me is not correct. There's no ideal gas that is, you can define monoatomic, diatomic. But it gives a convenience and you can relate it to us because let's just put a quote unquote idea. So what it means is under, in the, in the limit of, okay, in the limit of pressure goes through. So I think this is what they're trying to say, okay? In the textbook and many of the cases. When you have a helium, Argon, and I guess I have to put a neon, argon. And you have a hydrogen, something like nitrogen, I don't know, oxygen, something like that. It, this is the one in the limit of when the pressure goes, goes to zero. And why am I saying that is, this is a, uh, this molecule, which is just like a ping pong ball or a billiard ball, they can just <laughs> move around X, Y, Z. They only have a three degree of freedom, right? So because of that, this is been predicted this way. You have each what is called the equivalent contribution to the energy, and they can move x, y, and z three degree of freedom. They can they have this. Whereas this one, yep, they can move x, y, z. And then what? You have this molecule, right? This is a diatomic <coughs> molecule. They can tumble this way. They can tumble that way. But they cannot tumble the other way, right? 
So there are only two ways of tumbling. This tumbling doesn't make any big kind of energy changes in a way. This tumbling and that tumbling matters, right? But if I tumble myself, that doesn't matter, right? If I, 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 I cannot tumble. <laughs> if you can tumble this way, if you can the other, tumble the other way, you can do it. So what, what it means is each one is contributed to exactly this one contribution. Okay, so this one is three times contribution, x, y, z. Make sense, right? And this one, certainly x, y, z is there. And then rotating x, rotating y. Rotating, uh, according to this, z, it doesn't exist. So how many degree of freedom do I have? This is the CVN. Okay. Do I need to say what's the CP value? Yeah. So that's I don't have to say I don't have to give it to you. Because this is an internal energy component that is easy to understand. This is a more normal system under constant pressure that is actually easy to measure by this system. Mm -hmm. And this is how the connection is given by this simple equation that we easily can do. And later, this thing called CPM divided by CVM, and it has an even name for the symbol, the ratio between the heat capacity and this one will come up in chapter three. And so if you actually look at the back of your textbooks, and then I don't have a calculator with me, but I know that this is like a 8.314, right? So this is about eight, and three is 24 divided by two, about 12. 13 or something, if you look at the book, amazingly, heat capacity and the constant volume, or constant pressure is usually given, and you, you guys can know that that number matches really well, okay? And it actually works really well for the helium. Sort of working well, but there's a little probably correction is needed, and argon is, has a polarizable, so there's an extra sort of the energy, well, so some something in the system. Okay. All right. Uh